North 100 Showdown, a Canadian Highlander. Throwdown? Don't take my line from me. Throwdown. Mimi Wheeler. And joining me today, I have a search. Oh, what an absolute pleasure it is to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. It's great to have you here. Uh, and we couldn't do this without you being here. And by here, I mean over at patreon.com slash loading ready run in the sense that everything that, you know, we do is brought to you by you, but also by us in a way. And if you like what we're bringing, you can uh, take a little gander down in the description there for information on the format or on the deck lists that we are playing today. This goes in Aristocrats. What does? Aristocrats. Oh! I'm playing four color aristoc uh, Aristocrats, excuse me, uh, a slightly updated version on the list that I won a tournament with in 2022. Mm. Uh, I play bad cards. <laughs> Such bad so cards. many bad Man, cards. Man, Aristocrats, is it the deck with the worst cards? Uh, maybe red white equipment is worse, but hold on. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> uh, I play cheap things, I sacrifice them, I drain your life, and uh, nothing I have feels good to get rid of. Mm. If you're you. Mm. If you're me, it's great. Points. Uh, my points are Mox, 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 Tainted Pack. <laughs> Love it. Don't ask me which Moxin. I don't remember. <laughs> well, you got three out of four guesses. <laughs> mm -hmm. That ain't bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on Red White Equipment. A deck that only plays good cards. That is not true, even outside of me. So, this is probably the best version of this list I've made. Okay. I have cut a lot of the Surge cards, and I have gone for all killer, no filler. Now, it's not red, white, death and taxes. It's not red, white, hate bears. It's not red, white, moon. It is cards that want to carry equipment. It's a lot of haste creatures, a lot of first strike creatures, and a lot of creatures that synergize with equipment. I'm pretty excited about it. Okay. And my points are Mox, Mox, Gte. Ooh. Now, those of you who can count, well, that's kind of rude. Mm -hmm. Three cards. <laughs> it's only eight points. And I think this might be one of the first times on the show that we haven't brought a full ten-point list. Other than red, but that doesn't count. Sure, yeah. yeah. And there's an interesting question to have of, like, do you need all ten? And I would argue no. And there's different point spreads. You can't do Mox Mox Crypt anymore. Mm -hmm. And what am I accelerating into? Why would I cut GTA for other acceleration? And I could have done Mox Sol Ring GTA or Mox Crypt GTA. Maybe one of those probably works out. Mm -hmm. And I realized this deck is so pip heavy that the Mox are actually much more valuable than the extra acceleration that those the other alternatives would have given. Yeah, people often just look at the points in, uh, value of an individual card and think, well, Sol Ring is better to include than GTA because yeah. you know it's more points. And it's like, well. GTA wins so many games. So many games. And, like, you kind of have to ask yourself, like, are you going to win more games by including GTA or Soul Ring in your deck? Mm. And I think the answer is GTA. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying to think of how many of our games have been settled by Aether Vile or GTA in these matchups in the series so far. Yeah. It's a lot. A lot. Anyways, I won the die roll. Unfortunately. You, re you ready to, uh, to jamble? Yes, let's. All right. Well, speaking of GTA, I've got Flooded Strand. I'm going to crack it for a red-white duel and cast a Steel Shaper's Gift for an Umezawa's Jite. Okay. So I'm going to uh, resolve my search and pass to you. Hmm. This deck's mana base is a thing. Well, <laughs> your four-color deck means yeah. perfect mana, right? Uh... It does make for some interesting sequencing. So yeah, Plateau, Umezawa's GTA. I'm not going to respect the days, so I'm going to lead with a Mox Jet. Oh! The Mox draws from this deck are also not as exciting. Uh, it's just the other points are like Demonic Tutor, GTA, mm. and whatnot. But I'm going to play Carrion Feeder. Okay. It's a good turn one play. And then I'm going to play a tapped Temple Garden and Pass. All right, GTA is in my hand. Plateau is on the battlefield. Untap, draw for the turn. Sack outlet A. Deck's known for them. Don't like that very much. 
then you are going to hate the other 92 cards in my deck. <laughs> I'm going to play a Needle Verge Pathway. Mm -hmm. Two mana. I'm going to cast a Walking Ballista. X is one. Oh, rude. There's other sequencing I can do here, and I'm really worried about that taking off, but I'm also... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's also, it's it's not a good card, so it's so weird to sort of sequence my turnaround trying to kill this 1-1. One, one. It's, man, stupid aristocrats. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's, there's always the kind of like, it sounds like it would be more straightforward than it is, but do you kill the sack outlet or do you kill the blood artist? Yep. Um, my understanding is that aristocrats is a bunch of bad cards. They're all bad they're cards. All, they're so bad. It's all bad they're cards. They're so bad. But together they become okay cards. Your planeswalkers are okay. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, it's just trash. <laughs> uh, speaking of trash, I'm going to put this Verdant Catacombs in the graveyard. Yeah. Uh, and find myself a Taiga. And I'm going to play Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. That is a Planeswalker. It's been a hot minute since I've uh, had to say this card's full name alone. Mm -hmm. But she's going to let me poop out some plant tokens. And I would like to activate Nissa to create a 0-1 green plant token. That's the plus one ability, eh? That is the plus one Man. ability. Surge, would you like to respond? I'm probably, to my... I'm probably supposed to. I mean, I don't want to, uh, for this, uh, I'm not doing this for the sake of uh, baiting you. It's more for comedy, but I, I you know. Um, yeah, this card, the sack outlets are really tough. Like, yeah. You do want to get rid of them. So the problem is, if I kill your creature in response, mm -hmm. I can't pressure it anymore. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. If I rip a mox, I can cast and equip GTA. Mm hmm and this can't block, and so you only have a 0-1, and then I have a Walking Ballista and a, and a g tail mine, which is absurd. I don't have the Mox in my hand, so, like, that's a... I have two Mox in, and I've gone through 10 cards in my deck, so that's uh, a 1 in 35, <laughs> 1 in 40, 1 in 45 to rip or something like that, which is not great. You're also in white and red. You have multiple ways of killing this, um, if you really want to go down that route. If it's the only card you have for pressure... Then... Well, I have other creatures. It's just, it's just, I'd have to take a turn off to put it on the board, and then you have this zero one on hand, mm. air, and the, in play. Man, this is actually really tough. Yeah, this is the best part about Aristocrats is a very hard deck to pilot, um, but also it's really difficult to play against because it's just take everything you know about threat evaluation and throw it out the window. It can't block. So the problem is, oh no, if you play a Blood Artist, I can just kill the Blood Artist. The only thing I have to worry about is something, well, if you play one of the stupid enchantment ones that I can't kill, then your sack outlets. No, it's fine. It's fine. You have a plant. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to keep the creature so I can pressure. Is that your final answer? Yes. Okay. I will tell you whether or not I think you should have killed it afterwards. Yes, please. Um, so I make this plant. I would also like to use this as an opportunity. Just look at how many tokens this does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The brain. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on. I'm on this for red white as well. Like, man. <laughs> uh, then I'm going to pass the turn. <laughs> Untap. Draw. Wooded foothills. Umezawa's Jite. Mm -hmm. Attack Nissa. Nissa goes to three. Pass. Untap. Draw. I'm going to play a Plateau. I would like to tick up Nissa to make a plant token. Yep. I would like to go to combat. Yeah. No locks. Take one. I'm at 18. On tap three, mm. and cast Doretti, uh -oh. Ingenious Iconoclast. Uh, so I can poop out artifact creatures for plus one. Minus one, I can sack an artifact, and if I do, destroy target artifact or creature, and then minus six to clone artifacts in my graveyard or in play. Um, 
I am going to minus two, or minus one, rather. Goodbye, Jitay. Yeah, I will, <laughs> assuming uh, yeah. that's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm going to sack that and destroy that. I'm going to pass. Land. Mm -hmm. Can the Dreddy tokens block? Uh, they can. It makes 1-1 one, one defenders. Oh, right. <laughs> ah. How am I on the back foot to Aristocrats? Wait, you did play Planeswalker, Planeswalker. I have played like, Planeswalker. That's, that's, just, that's just good. And I don't like that. Yeah, this deck gets to play a lot of three mana Planeswalkers. Attacked already. I would like to block with a plant. That's fine. Before damage. I'm going to sack yep. to put a counter yep. on my carrying figure. Uh, <laughs> no, that's fine. All right. Second main. You have no more artifacts. That's fine. I'm going to cast Showdown of the Scalds. Ooh. And I'm going to crack this for a... I'll pay, I'll pay two life. I'll get a, um, whatever the red-white Rav duel is, untapped. Sacred Foundry. Sacred Foundry. I need another white source, and I have to fetch for red on that one. Sacred Foundry. This card's really cool. Exile the top four cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. And then whenever you cast a spell this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Seems to synergize pretty well with Walking Ballista. And, you know, if I untap with it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to cut before I exile four? No, nah, you're good. All right. One chapter. Exile four cards. Stoneforge. Bloodthirsty Adversary. Castle Embereth. And Sokanzan Crucible of Defiance. Okay. Are the four that we've hit. Till the end of your next turn. So I can hew, I can let's play. So I can play one of the lands and I can cast the two spells. Yeah. Just move everything over so this is all visible okay. here. Okay. I hope that's clear that these are in exile next to it. I'm just trying yeah. to yeah, yeah. present all the info here. Go. Untap. Draw. I'm going to play a Silent Clearing. I'd like to plus one to ready. Yep. Got to <clears throat> go through a lot of tokens here. Make a construct. I would like to think about whether or not I can kill you. Mmm. Hold on, gotta been, do aristocrat. I was gonna say it's been a while since I've seen aristocrats, but I don't, I don't know many lines where I die at fifteen here. Ooh, you didn't see that blood artist. <laughs> You've only got one black source, so you can't even double blood artist me. I think I can kill you. Show me. Okay. I'm going to cast Mog War Marshal. Two mana, one, one. When it comes into play or is put into a graveyard from play, I create a one, one red goblin. Ow. Go to play Cruel Celebrant. Whenever Cruel Celebrant or another creature or Planeswalker I control dies, each opponent loses one life and I gain one life. All right, so let me do some math while that's on the stack. <laughs> sure. You haven't activated this yet. Correct. You haven't attacked me for the turn yet. Correct. So if you were to attack me, mm -hmm. if you were to plus one and then attack me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Or if you had another body, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Sorry. Oh, the math. All right, so if you just add another body and you attack me, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, mm. ten. And it's another? I don't see how you can kill me. May I? Yep. Again, I, I did and the you, math and I was like, ah, it's either 14 or 15. Or I, I, the most I counted to was like 12 there. So if I... Because you've already used already. You have yeah. only haven't done... I haven't done Nissa. You haven't done Nissa yet. And you've already played a land. Yeah. So if I make a token here, yeah. uh, hypothetically, hypothetically. Um, and I attack for 1, 2, yeah. and then 3, 4, yeah. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 13, 14, right. 15. Wait, and is this... Whenever it or another. Well, that is 15. Well, that's bad. <laughs> I don't think there's a way you can respond to this. Well, we're, we did the math while this is still on the stack. So I can shoot one of the creatures, and that saves me two. But the problem is... I think I'd die anyways after that, because if I don't live through the math crack here, my play is to go Stoneforge into Stoneforge into Blood Spear, whatever that's called. Shadow Spear. Into Shadow Spear, into Equip Shadow Spear. This has three counters on it, now has lifelink. Then I can crack in, then I can start to gain some life back by firing down the board. Mm -hmm. That obviously doesn't work if I'm dead. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's exact -sies? Or 16, because I can sack it to itself. I mean, I'd, I'd sack this or, or this. Uh, yeah. But if you... Well, so if I hold on. If I shoot one, because I have to shoot basically anything there before it yeah. starts, uh, that saves me two health, and then I don't die. If you shoot this, and I sacrifice this... All hypothetically. Yeah. Uh, then it goes up to here. And, and then, then we have 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, four 5, six, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Dead either so way. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> should I have killed the sack outlet? Yeah. Absolutely. You absolutely yeah. should have killed the yeah. sack outlet. I yeah. thought about it. If you hadn't got rid of the GT though, I had Ray Evan Hand. Mm. And so on the turn after, I have a double strike GT online on a walking ballista. That's pretty scary. And that's that's why I didn't. I, I think that because this is carrion feeder... I know. It's, you it's, should kill. And that's the funny thing. Because anyone else is thinking it's carrion feeder. Who cares? But having played against aristocrats, I know and I care. So I would like to uh, 15 you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I die. Okay. All right. Knowing that these are the three cards there, are you still carrying, killing carrion feeder? Yeah. yeah. I think you just take... like. Yeah. Prevent yourself from dying and take a little bit of time to develop. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Because, yeah, the two most important things to kill in the Aristocrats deck are obviously the Blood Artists and possibly even more importantly the Sack Outlets. Yeah. I should have killed it. Oh, well. GG. GG. Game two. I did have a double Planeswalker start. That was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are, I think, the only four mana Planeswalker I'm running is Minsk and Boo. Mm. And then other than that, I have six, maybe five, three mana Planeswalkers. Yeah, you're also playing, you're also playing Gray, Grist. Grist, yeah. What other Planeswalker do you play in at three? Uh, Ob Nixilis. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Cruelty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Doretti, Ob, Grist, Nissa. Am I on a Liliana? I might be on a Liliana the Veil. The Veil? Or not of the Veil, but last, last Hope. Yeah. I'm on the I'm on the three mana Liliana, the flip Liliana. Really? I mean, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Kind of like a planeswalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sack outlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, GTA doesn't matter if it never connects. That's another thing where like GTA, I think maybe. You shouldn't put as much value in GTA just because if I have a sack outlet, then GTA is made like at yeah. least on the in the in that pocket of time. I mean, one one counter to that though is your deck is almost all mono X ones. Yeah. So an online GTA just abs it ends the game. Agree. Yeah. But I think you need to create a game state where that's the case before. Like, you can't force that. Yeah, and of course, with a sack outlet, you can always prevent GT from ever getting counters as well, which is kind of a pain. Yeah. 
again, very tough deck to play against mm. and tough, like, there are certain matchups for aristocrats too where like death and taxes we had a death and taxes uh one of the dnt pilots the diehards in our local scene was talking about playing this recently and they were saying my opponent uh was just losing to their own deck for their entire like the entire match basically hmm. uh and it was still just so infinitely close and they could not do anything like if the aristocrats deck didn't stumble, uh, they were a goner. And this is a six land hand. Oh, I've got I got one of these. Okay, I have. I don't do that too. very often. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think I don't I don't sneak very often. Ooh, okay. Excited to die. Well, hopefully. Okay. Make a make a series out of this, you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, I will keep. Mm -hmm. Got a bottom that one. All right. All right. You Good ready luck. to rumble? Yes, let's. Raghavan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Monkey. Monkey. <laughs> Land of War Wastes, I've got a 19, play of Birds of Paradise yep. to pass. Untap, draw for the turn. Lightning Helix on the bird. You got a 23, yep. bird dies. Attack you. I got a 17, UXL. Whenever the monkey deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token, exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card. It's a land. It's fine, it can stay in exile. Go. That was a good draw. Oh. I mean, it was an all right draw. Um, hmm. So, I drew a Mox. Mm. Uh, I'm going to play Blood Crypt untapped. I'm going to 15. I'm going to cast Mox Jet. I should not risk this monkey living i don't the monkey's probably supposed to die i'm going to cast oh. <laughs> the meat hook massacre x yep. is one yep. so when it enters the battlefield each creature gets my sex my sex whenever a creature i control dies you lose one whenever a creature you control dies i gain one so i go up to 60. it's a really good card go ahead untap draw for the turn i'm going to try wastelanding your red source that's a good idea then saying go Go. Oh, no. <laughs> Showdown of the Scalds, mm. sacrificing the treasure token. Steel Shaper's Gift, Ancient Tomb, Ranger Captain of Eos, Venerable War Singer. Ooh. Those are all very good cards. I'd like to pass to you. You can play a land for the turn. Didn't I play the basic planes? Mm, I don't think so. Because previous played, turn, previous turn, I waste landed. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mind. then this turn, I played a land and then sacrificed the treasure token. That was that. a test you passed. I believe, I believe that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, draw. Ooh, we got there. We can now cast spells. Uh, no. By you. They're not good spells. Well, some of them are. Um, I'm going to cast Bastion of Remembrance. Yep. So when it comes into play, I make a 1-1 one, one white human soldier. Um, and whenever a creature I control dies, you lose one and I gain one. We have two Blood Arst effects on the board. It's very bad for Surge. Go ahead. Untap. Draw for the turn. Iterate this up by one. Whenever you cast a spell this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature that you control. Oh. So I'm going to play land for the turn. Mm -hmm. Which is Ancient Tomb. So this is very interesting. I have access to five mana, but only have two white. So I can't Ranger Captain of Eos and Steel Shaper's Gift. No. 
But I can Venerable War Singer and Steel Shaper's Gift, which yes. is kind of cool. Uh, and that seems probably like the best bet. Trample is pretty overpowered in this yeah. matchup. So I'm going to tape, tape, tap Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb, yeah. Thank you for paying the two there. I've cast the Venerable War Singer. Mm -hmm. Then I have one floating still. I'm going to cast the Steel Shaper's Gift. I have a trigger. Yep. I get to put a plus one, plus one counter onto this. I'm going to go and find an Umezawa's Jite. Haha, ha, I'm in danger. Yep. Because trample in Jite means even if he has a sack outlet, I still get to trundle on in. Yep. This is actually maybe a good time for that I could do a cut. Uh, can you adjust your mic, Surge? It's rubbing all over your shirt. Oh, I'm so sorry. How's that? It's much more visible now. Yeah. But, but well, I mean, it can still go in there. It just can't. How's that? Uh, no, I'm getting like a bunch of hissing from it, which is annoying, but actually good. Um, can you keep like shuffling around a bit? Am I good to keep shuffling, or do you need me to uh, keep resolving the audio okay. issues? Okay. All right, Steel Shaper's GIF for GIF. <laughs> Steel Shaper's GIF. Well, the creator pronounced it GIF. <laughs> for an Umezawa's Jite. <laughs> this is in my hand. I still have... One mana off Ancient Tomb. I'm going to cast a Shadow Spear, putting another plus one, plus one counter. And then I will go to end of turn, and the Ranger Captain of Eos will stay in exile yep. forever. Untap. Draw. It's not looking good for Wheeler. Me. Uh, I'm going to play Pawn of Ulamog. Uh, three mana, two, two, that whenever it or another non-token creature I control dies, I make a zero, one Eldrazi spawn. Mm. Go. Mm. Untap, untap. Draw. Showdown goals to three. This showdown goes to 100. Can't think of a better play than play a Ganjo. Mm -hmm. Two life, go down to 19. Mm -hmm. Cast Umizawa's Jite. Yep. Put the counters on the singer. Oh, okay. Tap two, equip the Jite. Yep. Tap two, equip the Shadow Spear. Oh, okay. Seems like a pretty good turn. It's not bad. Yeah. So this is currently a 6-6 six, six with Vigilance, Trample, Trample, Lifelink, and a Jite. Okay. Oh, and, and Vigilance. So I, I will attack with the stack. Uh, So I take seven, right? Yes. Shadow Spear goes yep. plus one. So I go to nine. I gain seven. I go to 26. I have two triggered abilities. One, I get to put two counters on Jite. Mm -hmm. And two, whenever the Venerable Warsinger deals combat damage to a player, you may return target creature card with mana value X or less from the graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of damage it dealt this turn. I will return Baragavan to okay. the battlefield. Winnable, by the way. <laughs> Now, this gives you bodies when it dies? How does Whenever it or another non-token creature dies. Whenever I make, it or a non-token creature yeah, dies. I make zero ones. That can sack to add mana. Now, this is supposed to be gone now. Yes. Because yeah, it had yeah. three counters on it. So put it in the graveyard. But Wasn't doing I would anything. like to say I wanted to show it was there so people understood where that plus one plus one counter came from. Yeah. That was, that was my gift to the audience. <laughs> so generous. Oh, thank you. I'm going to say go. Hmm. I'm going to say go to next game. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, yeah. wow. <laughs> Oof. There's not much to say. I mean, both ways, you killed me from 15 to nothing. That's it's, true. You know That's what? That's true. You know what? Depending on how long this takes, we, we, maybe we get ourselves a big series here, you know? Ooh, we got some okay. rock'em sock'em robots okay. right now. <laughs> I think we spent more time <laughs> shuffling and talking than we have actually played Magic right now. Like, it these is, have been fast games. It is very funny. I'm glad I didn't say it out loud because in my head, um, 
Aristocrats is like one of the few archetypes where the opponent having a Rogavon on one, it's just like, okay, mm. my hunted witness will block <laughs> or my hunted witness token will block. Like it just doesn't have that same push yeah. as it does in other archetypes. But I kept a very um, engine focused hand. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, you had two blood artifacts, right? Like that's terrifying. Yeah, and a Lurus. Mm. Uh, and like Orzov Pontiff, which I couldn't cast without the, the bird, but um, yeah. Yikes. It's okay. <laughs> Classic aristocrats. <laughs> just dying to a 2 1. Well, dying. <laughs> right? It's not just any 2 1. That's true. Right? That's like, true. It's not like it's a Savannah Lion. Yeah. Would I you mean, like to cut? No, you're fine. Yeah. The, the War Singer. I think is important to highlight because yep. big trampling creatures kind of uh, invalidate what like a lot of the strengths that this deck can can gain. Would you like to go? No, oh. you're good. You're good. I like this hand. Same also. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Concealed courtyard, and I'm going to cast Inquisition of Kozal. Targeting. <laughs> Was not expecting the hand attack. All right, I have three lands. Mm -hmm. Fetch, fetch, fetch. I've got a Forked Bolt. Okay. A Lightning Helix. Okay. A Bloodthirsty Adversary and a Lurus. So this is the seven I kept against you, which I think I think was not a great hand, but pretty good in this matchup. It gets significantly worse when I lose any of these cards. Yeah, I think I'm going to take... This is kind of tricky. I'm never really interested in taking removal. Mm. Or at least not right now, because that's not exile removal. And my hand is very annoying. Um, I could take this Bloodthirsty Adversary to try and keep you off of... Pressure. Uh, pressure. Like, yeah. But if I do that, then it opens up your Lightning Helix. And Luris is a card that lets you grind. And I don't know if I... I want to make you feel bad. Mm. Uh, about your choices, I should say. So, yeah, I don't want you to have that Lurus. All right. And then I'm going to pass. My top draw makes that Lurus going to have been even worse. Mm. Even worse. Even worse. So, Arid Mesa, yep. I'm going to fetch down to 19 and grab a Savannah, and you'll see why in a second. Or, did I say Savannah? I meant Plateau. Yeah. Pardon me. I know what the names of lands are called. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> this is why I just say ready whitey most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to cut? No, you go. You know what? Uh, what's best friends with Luris? This faithless looting mm. that I ripped off the top. You could have honestly named any card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Luris. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, draw. Draw. Oh. What do I pitch? Spells. <laughs> I could see. I mean, I don't. I don't know what cards you drew. I could see an argument to getting rid of some of the burn because again, uh, you don't know that my like it's it's worthwhile holding on to some number of them to deal with sack outlets. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I'm supposed to keep threats, not removal, because I need to be proactive. Which is really tough. I, I actually really like my burn against you in this matchup. I really, really, really value the removal. Okay. Uh, I think pitching a land is really bad. Because if I stumble on mana, this game's over. Yeah, if you didn't draw a land. So I, I can't do that. So I think... This could just be the... Fa I think too many people look at Faithless Lootings and don't like just accept that sometimes it's one mana mill too. Yeah. Well, I would argue that the cards that I got are better. <laughs> Great, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. It's going to be Bloodthirsty Adversary and Fork Bolt. Okay. Are the two cards that we're ditching there. Okay. And I'll pass to you. Draw. Play Misty Rainforest. Yeah. I'm going to fetch. Yeah, watch you go Elf, Elf. 
<laughs> no, I'm going to play a card that I... Well, am I going to play this card? I was going to say, I was going to play a card that I talk a lot of smack about. But I think instead I'm going to play a Voice of Resurgence. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah, go ahead. That's a good one. This is like a forgotten card in the sense that people I forget never, it exists until they lose it. to it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that card slaps. Yeah. So I can't cast any instants or else you get another one of those tokens. Uh, any spell on my turn. Any spell on your turn, which makes oh. my Lightning Helix really awkward. Yeah. Really awkward. Uh, windswept Teeth, I'm going to shortcut here and get a basic planes. I'm going to cast Carry Zev. I upgraded Bloodthirsty Adversary into a Carry Zev. Okay. Yeah, I don't hate that. I think that was an upgrade. This represents more damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, we did it! Chivo unlocked. Both players shuffling at the same time. <laughs> uh, go ahead. That's a thing. Um. Would you like to cut? Okay. I'm going to go to 17. I am going to cast a Birds of Paradise. Yeah. And I'm going to cast a Bitter Blossom. Mm. Go ahead. Mm. This is the card I was thinking about playing last turn, which I smack talk Constantly. all the time. Constantly. Partially at a dig to Jer, but also uh, because he's wrong. <laughs> Attack. Mm. Attack with the Raghavan. No blocks. All right, take three. I go to 14. End of turn or end of combat? Monkey's gone. White Plume Adventurer. Mm. Let's introduce the initiative. Okay. Just kind of scary against a bitter blossom. It is. But I think that's fine. Okay. Right. Welcome to the Undercity. First page. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. <clears throat> Find me a basic mountain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Beginning of each opponent's upkeep, untap a creature you control. All right, so I'll pass to you. Mm -hmm. Upkeep, untap, carry Zev. Sure. Uh, untap. Go to 13. Make a fairy. Draw. I'm going to play a Skull Clam. Oh. I'm oh. going to put a Skull Clamp on mm, my voice wizard. It's a 3 1 now. Yeah, okay. This has first strike. Oh, right. I am not going to do that. <laughs> I thought this was a 4 4. Yeah. Um, we should still have one mana tap for the Clamp. Unless you want to back up all the way. That's fine, too. Uh, That's totally fine. I do too. have two 2 drops in my hand. I think I. Yeah. This does kind of honk, but I think. I'm not going to play this. That's fine. That's, that's okay. fine. That's fine. That's fine. I will play a couple of creatures out. I'm going to play Brindle Shoat. Uh, two mana, one, one, when it dies, and make a three, three. Yep. And then tap two to cast a Scavenging Ooze. That's a good one. And I'm going to pass. All right. Untap. Upkeep. I've kept the initiative for an entire turn cycle. I hate it. Yeah. I think I'm going to go ahead and forge... Onto Carry Zev. Mm -hmm. Carry the Zev is now a 3 5 with first strike. Draw for the turn. Mountain. Mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 of 7. <laughs> Uh, so if you block with everything, 
That's still fine. I'm going to attack with Carry Zev and the monkey. Taking a lot of damage here. Um, but I think maybe part of that's okay. Lose my clamp, but that's okay. I'm going to block Raghavan. Okay. Uh, and take three. Yeah. I go to ten. This dies, and I make a boar token. Yeah. Somewhere in here. There it is. Goofy boar. All right. Second main, uh, Lightning Helix to Scavenge News. Okay. And you go to 21. You go to 21. You do get to take the initiative from me, which is cool. Far out. And good. Pass. Right. Upkeep. Upkeep. Yep. I'll untap carry Zev. 19. Right, I'm going to put the lazy fairies over here. <laughs> well, they're sick. I shouldn't yeah. call them lazy. That's rude. Yeah, there's old shorthand we used to use in the community, too, of leaving the token on the bitter blossom. That's yeah. Just another, another way to represent it. Combat. Mm -hmm. Fairy rogue. I go to 20. The initiative is yours. Please and thank you. I've... I also have the initiative. Now the question is, does he have basics? I have a basic. Oh. I do have a basic. So I get the initiative. This is going to get... This is Aristocrats. <laughs> it's going to get cleared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I go into the secret entrance. And I am going to find a basic forest. Um, I will now tap my concealed courtyard to play Skull Clamp. The aforementioned Skull Clamp. That blocks that, that blocks that. Stupid menace. Thinking about whether or not I want to actually play this forest, or do I want to potentially draw a different land. I guess if I draw a different land, it doesn't matter, and this is better for my mana. So I will play this forest, and I'm going to immediately try to clamp my tapped yep, fairy. that's fine. Um, so I draw two cards. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff. No. It's the okay stuff. Two mana, three mana. Going to play Mayhem Devil. Oh, that is good stuff. Whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, deals one damage to any target. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. All right, untap. Draw for the turn. Well, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Urza's Saga. Uh, yeah. Can't be that good. You're not doing anything with it. Sword of Fire and Ice. Oh, crap. <laughs> Equip Sword of Fire and Ice to carry Zev. You know, you know how people talk about, like, <laughs> I wish that in high school I was taught, like, basic finances, taxes, all that jazz. I wish somebody taught me how to shut the hell up. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't say stuff like this yeah. and then have hubris. Yeah. Yeah. All right, monkey's coming at you. So Carrie Zev and her pet monkey, Raghavan, are, um, are swinging on in. And that's pro red and white? Pro red and blue. Red and, red and white would have been amazing, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, my 3-3 three, three is going to block the monkey. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to double block with my voice of resurgence and the fairy token. Yep. So first strike damage will kill both. Sure. Raghavan will die to the boar. I do lose out on you having to sacrifice Raghavan. Yep. Well, it's off. exiled anyways. Oh, it's exiled. Yeah, so I wouldn't okay. be sacrificing it either way. Um, so I'm going to represent this with a die, even though... Oh, it's... this is the uh, the green-white elemental equal to the number of creatures you control. Yeah. I didn't get the initiative back, which is a little scary. But I did clear two of your bodies, which is cool and good. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, I wonder if I was supposed to swing out there. Maybe you could have traded the White Plume Adventure for your Mayhem Devil. I'm happy with that. Or No, you just trade your Boar token. No, you don't, because you blocked with the Boar token. I, I trade Boar here. And, and then I you, block and you eat it the other way. Yeah, yeah, so that was a perfectly good yeah. non-attack then. Uh, let me say go. Okay, upkeep. Uh, you get to untap your thing. White Plume. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought I only did that if I had the initiative. No. no. Holy moly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, real good. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I'm going to go to eight. Yep. I'm going to make another fairy rogue. Yep. Uh, I'm going to actually go into the lost well to scry two. That makes sense. I mean, scrying two with drawing two off Jitae seems quite good. That's a pretty good draw. Oh, man, I hear Ben making <laughs> ooh noises off yeah, camera. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, I like sitting on this side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put one on top and one on the bottom. Top, bottom. Okay. Draw for turn. Um, I'm going to cards in hand. I have two cards in hand. I'm going to play a bayou. Tap three to cast Luris of the Dream Den. That's really bad for me. Yeah. That's really... Oh, so you get a Luris, but I don't get a Luris. I see how it is. Well, I, I mean, uh -huh. to you, she's Luris. To me, she's Lulu. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you recasting? I'm going to start off with a Scavenging Ooze. Yep. Out of the graveyard. Yep. Uh, and then I'm actually going to immediately exile your Faithless Lulu. Yeah. 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 God, that's such a good turn. God, that's such a good turn. I'm going to then pass the turn, yeah. and I'm going to adjust this die, because yeah. now it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah. Go. Who's a good girl? Who's a... Draw. Plus one. I actually got a hilarious counter draw. Line Sash. <laughs> Spider-Man meme. You wouldn't exile my pig, would you? Don't answer that. You have access to one, two, three, four green sources, and I have access to two white sources. Yes. Uh, I just have to hit creatures. You also have a Lurus. You have to hit permanent. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to hit my creatures. Yeah. yeah, I think I'm actually just supposed to preemptively do it so you can't get value off your Lurus because I can't do that in response because you hold priority and then you remove yeah. it from the stack because you're casting it, right? It's not yeah. an activated ability. Uh, I do need to attack you first. That's worthwhile, yeah. Yeah, because this is big. I mean, I just end up throwing away the Raghavan token, but I don't think I care about that. Can you put enough meat in front of this to ruin me? No, it's kind of awkward because first strike means that you just kill off the things that are small enough so that this shrinks. Yeah. How many creatures do you put in front of it and then I just have a bad time though? I don't think there's actually a number that is like, because you have one, two, three, four, five. Um, I mean, I guess How I could do... Double block, I, it, my carries up just dies. No, because you kill off this and this gets to six. And yeah. That survives. Because that's a. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Six, seven. Yeah, but you can triple block it. Oh, then I just first strike. That's a thing, right? Any number of creatures you put in front of it, unless you put your entire board, I first strike to death. Yeah. Because then... you can't block there. Yes. So then you do. You have access to. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And then you'd have two, three. Eight, nine. Like, I don't want to trade off... Your entire board for this carry Zev and then just move the sword over. I think over I'm okay with my current Luris Bitter Blossom plan. For now. For now. Well, I'm supposed to clear your board anyways, so I'll attack. Uh, I will block with Scavenging Ooze and my... Uh, I'll block with... Ooh. <clears throat> I'll block with my boar token and my fairy token, and then Raghavan will get blocked by Mayhem Devil. That's fine. 
Oh, first strike damage. Yeah. yeah. God, imagine if I had an arc trail right now. <laughs> that faithless looting was going to be incredible, by the way. It was going to it was I, going to make you have a bad bad day. I figured that that was the thing that would. So, if I eat your voice of resurgence, I'm absolutely supposed to. I put a plus one plus counter on here. If mm. I also eat your other creature, it turns off lures for the turn, but it also keeps me from making a saga token. Yeah. And I think the construct is more important, which is really hard to say because then yeah. you just get a free creature back. But having two of these is big for when you inevitably swing at me. And I could also push through more damage to try and grab the, um, the initiative from you. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to eat your voice of resurgence with Lion Sash and put a plus one plus one counter on it. And I guess the other thing I can do, if something really scary shows up, I can always do this end of turn. So I will just hold for now. You're on top of the initiative again. That's frustrating. <laughs> I'm not doing uh, that much with it. That's fair. I did take the worst path possible. Yeah. How do you? Untap. Upkeep. Untap carries out. Yeah. Go to seven. Make another fairy. And I'm going to go to the stash uh, to create a treasure and token. treasure token. Yeah. Uh, draw. That. You can't have two good draws back to back. Come on, Wheeler. You can't go lure us into something else. That is a draw. That is a draw. Go to tap two and cast. Christ. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to cast. Diabolic intent. So sacrifice a creature and demonic tutor for anything? Yeah. That's really I'm gonna, bad. I'm going to sack the fairy rogue. Yeah. I have a mayhem devil trigger. Yep. Let me think. I am going to shoot your Lion Sash. I'm going to target Lion Sash. When damage is marked on Lion Sash. Uh, Die Ball Contempt Resolves. So... I could just get like a sledgehammer, but I don't think that's actually correct. Get that, play that, down tick that. That lets me kill two things. I don't like the sounds of that. I don't have many things. Don't kill two things. That would be rude, Ben Wheeler. Could I, could I have killed you? I'm at 21. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Um, play that, get rid of that. Then you have that that goes on a thing, and then that that goes on a thing. So I think it's actually better for me to try and clear your board. I don't have to show you, but I will cast this card basically immediately. Um, I'm going to cast Grist, the Hunger Tide. I'm going to need to, you to go over what that one does again. Uh, as long as it isn't on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 one, one insect creature token. Yep. Uh, plus one, make a 1-1 one, one insect, and then I mill a card. If it's an insect card, I put a loyalty counter on it and then keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and then minus two, I can sacrifice a creature uh, when I do destroy target creature or planeswalker. And then minus five, each opponent loses life equal number of creatures in my graveyard. Interesting. You're um, fine. I am going to minus two Grist. Um, I believe this is also the Duretti uh, formatting of there's a trigger within the ability of I may sacrifice a creature. When you do destroy target creature. Yeah, I will figure out what the target is afterwards, yeah, though. Yeah. So for this one, I think it's fine because I, I do get to respond after the yeah. fact. I will say yes. Okay. I'm sacrificing... 
my Birds of Paradise. Yeah, to destroy. To destroy Kari's of. Okay. I do have a Mayhem Devil Trigger yeah. to target your Lion Sash. Yeah, you don't have any green mana open. Not, I do have a treasure token. You do have a treasure token. So I was going to say, I could try <laughs> and use the Lion Sash to protect it, but the treasure token kind of ruins that plan. Because then if I do commit to that, it still dies. Mm -hmm. And I don't get the, the Karnstruct. Which is a little tough. And then you get to attack me afterwards too, don't you? There's only a 4-4, four, four, so it's not as scary. Correct, yeah, right now it's... So if you swing with everything, well... Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> happens. Okay. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I am then going to pay one and sack this treasure for a green. I'll shoot you for one. You go down to 20 mm. uh, to replay Brindle Shout. Mm. So I go up to five yep. down here. Um, I'm going to play a Black Cleave Cliff, says my land for the turn, and I will pass. End step. <clears throat> Make a Karnstruct. Yeah. Untap. Mm -hmm. Untap. Mm -hmm. Draw step. So mm -hmm. I get to draw, and then I get to decide what I want to do with Urza Saga afterwards. Fascinating. Three. One, two, three, four, five. So if I do this, I have access to three. I'm going to do that. All right, so with the third chapter on the stack, I'm going to make another construct token. Yep. I'm now going to, is it sacrifice? Search your library. It is. Sacrifice it after. Wow. So you get to, you get to, Hit me for one either way. That's so rude. I will be pinging you for yeah. one. All right, an artifact. Mana cost zero or one. Now this is big. Put it onto the battlefield. So I'm not supposed to put the walking ballista onto the battlefield. <laughs> not even a legal target. Well, it has a... No, it's, it needs mana cost of zero or one. And so like X mana costs can't be... Oh, interesting. Two. I didn't know that. Not that it's super relevant but for our format, but stuff like Chalice of the Void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Esper Sentinel probably doesn't save me. I'm just grabbing all of my targets right now. Esper Sentinel also not a legal target because it has a mana of its cost is white. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> all right, so I have two hits because I don't really want to auction right now, and they are the Shadow Spear or Skull Clamp. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably just supposed to be Shadow Spear. I think the Life Link is going to save me here. Shadow Spear is the scariest one. Yeah. So let's put Skull Clamp back in the deck. We got the Shadow Spear. Oh, that's just in play. Yeah. Good card. God, what a good card. Uh, I'm going to play a Castle Emberth. Mm -hmm. My land for the turn. I have four mana. Show off. I know. Then I'm going to pay two. Mm -hmm. Equip one of the constructs with the Shadow Spear. Yep. I'm going to pay two. Equip one of the constructs with the Sword. Okay. So, let's look at their current power and toughness. One, two, three, four. So they're both four fours. Five, six, seven. Does that make sense? So this is a seven, seven, pro red, pro blue trample. And lifelink. Life yep. Seven, seven, pro red, pro blue trample mm -hmm. lifelink. And you link. put both of these on the one with summoning sickness? No. Okay, great. <laughs> Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I've chosen the one that can attack you this turn, Mr. Smart, Wheeler. Smart, smart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am going to attack your life points directly. Yeah, you sure are. <laughs> um, I wish you wouldn't. I know. I'm sorry. You have one card in hand? I have uno card in hand. Okay. I recommend putting 
a full seven points in front of it. I'm going to mention this because I have done this exact line of play. To yeah, someone. I have the trap. If I get the initiative, I, if I get the initiative, Wheeler dies. Which means that and if, if, he, if one point of damage goes through, that's one, and then he takes five, and he dies to his own Bitter Blossom. So yes. he has to full block this turn. Yeah, yeah. I have to make sure uh, that nothing's getting through, and I ask because now you can't hit me with, like, Solitude, and you don't have any mana up or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so that's seven. Yep. I'm going to double block with my scavenging ooze and my elemental token. I accept. So these will both die. Yeah. I will gain seven life. Yeah. You go up to 26. So the construct is dead. Both of these fall off. This is a 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Once again, curious if maybe I was supposed to attack with that too. Um, you just chump block there. Yeah. I, get I, to I feel like free. earlier if you attack with that, I'm super happy. And mm. now maybe we're at the point, but I think I, I think it's okay not. Yep. Say go. Uh, untap. So I go into the catacombs and I make a 4-1 skeleton. I don't know why. I saw my black token with four power. I grabbed Earthshaker Kenra. <laughs> So this is what? Hey, hold on. I got the, I got the you right got token the for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. yeah there's the skeleton yeah. for you. You'll have to excuse me. I got one out of 60 wrong. Yeah. Um, and I go to six. Yep. yep. Making a fairy token as well. Draw for turn. Oh. Stop. Every draw can't be an O. <laughs> I, with this deck, it certainly can. Uh, I'm going to tick up Grist yeah. to mill a card. It's Green Sun Zenith. I make a 1-1... One, one Insects. Yep. You certainly do. I'm going to pay one and clamp my brindle shout. Okay. So I make a 3-3 three, three boar. Yep. And draw two cards. Oh. I'm going to clamp my insect token. Now, this is a good sign. Sometimes when your opponent is clamping everything, although they are drawing cards, it means you're not dead. You might die, but the act of the second clamp means the first clamp wasn't good enough. Now is where Wheeler says, I think I can kill you. I think? No. 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 You can't kill me right now. I don't believe it's happening. I'm too strong. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Rude. Rude, rude, rude. It doesn't actually help me. Sorry, this is a no, 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 no. Take your time. Please. Turn here. Yeah, it's a complicated board state. It's been a very fun series. I think I'm going to play a scavenging goose. Yep. Back I'm, again. I'm going to immediately out of my graveyard off lures. I'm going to immediately eat probably my your, lures. Um, your lion sash. That's fair. So I go up to seven and I get a counter on this. Um, I am then going to play a Stomping Ground Tapped. And now do I want to save a mana by clamping, or do I want to preserve as much toughness as possible? I think I want to preserve as much toughness as possible. All right. I'm going to pass the turn. Untap. 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 Draw for the turn. Oh. See, I can do it too. Uh-huh. <laughs> Eight mana? That's frustrating. Great Furnace. You need eight mana? Well, then I can activate Castle and double equip. Oh, I see. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, as it is right now, I can't do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No green source. Eight, nine, ten. Ten toughness. 
So I can clear 10 toughness. I can clear 7 toughness off your board. Well, you can't, oh, you're you can't not block with red because right, it's right. sort of fire yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that seems good. Four mana. Mm -hmm. Double equip. Okay. Yeah, one more mana, and mm -hmm. I can pump for the additional point of damage off the castle, which is very cool. Do I double attack now? Then my White Bloom Adventure trades either for your Boar or your Mayhem Devil. And I have a card in hand still. Which is very cool. Or do I wait a turn to do that? I think I need to push more damage right now because I really need to kill that scavenging news before it gets big enough that it can stabilize. I attack with everything. Okay, let me do some math here. Yep. Um, this is a 6-6 six, six trampler for red. It should be 7 again. So 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, you 5, played 6, the artifact 7. Line. I played an okay. artifact line. Great Apologies. furnace. Yeah. So it's a 7-7 seven, seven trample lifelink, just like the last one. And this is a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. So, if I block, if I block with just like this, and you kill one of these, you lose. You're, if if you swords one of these, I go up to ten. Oh, if it's sword specifically. But yes. if it's path, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, it could be bolt as well, but bolt could just go to the face. But this represents more damage. I think that this might be overly cautious, but this is how I lose. So I'm going to throw everything that can block the car and struck in front of the car and struck. Yep. And I'm going to throw the mayhem devil in front of the white plume. I'm going to arrange the blockers. Take your time. I need seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. This says two. It's a three, two. I'm going to arrange the blockers like this. Okay. So the boar will survive and these will trade. Right. So you lose this, yep. I lose The board is empty. After this combat, the only thing on the board should be the boar. And I gain three. And you gain And I gain seven. seven. So you go to ten, I go to thirty-three. The board is empty. The boar is empty. The boar is empty. The boar needs Except to... you do have an online initiative. I do. And get you get to, to go to the throne of the dead three. Yeah. Get ready to see a one mana creature. <laughs> the biggest Tukatong Thalid you've yeah. ever seen. And uh, say go to you. Uh, okay. So I'm going to untap. I go to nine. Yep. Making a fairy. Um, or, sorry, I should technically. Go to my upkeep. I have two triggered abilities here. Yep. I'm yep. going to resolve the Undercity first. So I reveal the top 10 cards of my library, put a creature from among them into play, and it comes into play with three 1-1 one -one counters on it and gains Hexproof until my next turn. There's the aforementioned Liliana. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Liliana. Oh, you got a sack outlet. Yeah. All right. It was like Liliana... What else did we see? We saw Mog War Marshal. Yeah, yeah. So Liliana, her, her, Heretical Healer. Yeah. Really good card. Probably yeah. my pick. Yeah. Carrion Feeder. Convincing, because it's a sack outlet. Uh, here comes the Oh, the cat! Hoy. <laughs> Hello, boy. Garrison Cat. There he is. Uh, nested Shambler Mog... So three, just... <laughs> they <laughs> Some of the most creatures of all time. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I'm going to pick Liliana. Yeah, that's fair. So it enters with three plus one plus one counters as well? Uh, yes. So it's a uh, five, six with hexproof. Oofa it's a, the goofa. a five, yeah, five, six hex, hexproof lifelink. Yeah. So this is kind of funny because, like, I like l my creatures dying, but if it dies, then she loses these counters. Mm -hmm. um, or if she a, flips, she loses the counters. Th too. Sorry, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, t both are technically correct. <laughs> Multiple ways to lose the counters. Oh, I got him to cut. God, the dream. Mm -hmm. uh, You're at nine. Yeah, I am at nine. I make the rogue off this. Yeah. Uh, I am no longer in the Undercity, but I do have the initiative still. Draw. 
That's a good one. This is why you should cut my deck more often. I need mm. that. I need that surge luck. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three. I'm gonna cast Knight of Autumn. Mm. I would like to destroy your Shadow Spear. Tough but fair. Uh, I'm gonna tick up my Grist, mill a Mox Jet, make, make an a insect. Yeah. Um, then I am going to tap two and cast Strangle Root Geist. Oh, beep beep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two one haste undying. And I'm also going to cast. How do you have so many cards in hand? Uh, Skull Clamp and God. X one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to cast Goblin Rabble. Oh my master. God. Oh my God. I'm okay. Like, beginning of combat. Yeah. I make what a in the world Goblin token. Mm -hmm. And I'll attack you for six. I go to 27. Go, go ahead. All right, untap. Mm -hmm. Untap. Boo, 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 boo. Miracle! Oh. The triumph of St. Catherine is here. So I get a 5-5 five, five lifelink for two mana. I like that, the music. Thank you. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> All right, and it's just going to die next turn, but I'm going to give it the Sword of Fire and Ice. <laughs> Actually, let's do it in such a way that I have red red afterwards for the equip cost. I have a 7-7 seven, seven lifelink. Protection from red, protection from blue. Okay. Pass. Back at it again in the Undercity. Uh, I Get yourself a basic. Nope. I mean, I technically have to randomize, but my deck is already randomized. Do we want to just skip this, or do you want oh, to... Oh, you do not have any more basics? I you don't have literally have... one basic force in your whole deck? Yeah. And you don't know the location or the order of any cards? No. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I go to eight and make a Bitter Blossom token. You sure do. I draw a card. So this Liliana's going to flip, because I need to kill this thing. Um... How many creatures do you have to die before Lily flips? Like two or something like that? No, just whenever another non-token creature I control dies. Oh. I exile her, then return to play transformed with a 2-2 two -two zombie token. Yep. Um, and then... Oh, Surge. Mm. Okay. I'm going to... You don't have a, you don't have a um, Blood Artist yet, so I'm not just dead. I'm going to minus two my Grist, yep. sacrificing the fairy token. So to... I need to look at the top six cards of my library. When it dies, exile it in the top six cards of your library in a face down pile. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold on. Shuffle that pile and put it back on top of your library. Would you like to cut? No, you're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, my Liliana flips. Yeah. Because I had a creature die. Oh, no, excuse me. It's a non-token creature. Yeah, Remember that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Well. I'm going to take a lot of damage here. Yeah, because I'm going to play this Falcon Wrath Aristocrat oh, as well. I can, uh, I think I can just concede to that. Sure. 27. Yeah, the amount of damage that's coming right there. I am going to sacrifice my strangle root geist yeah. to the aristocrat. Flip it, bring back. Yeah, we got bring a sack outlet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm braid. That turn that you exiled my Faithless Looting, I had land, land, and had. Yeah, that exiling that Faithless Looting was so huge. Oh, that was a really close game. That was a close one. That was, that was a fun one. game. Yeah. That was a fun series. Shadow Spear, huh? I exile, uh, the hand attack, the one hand attack in three games hitting my Luris? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I think that was, I mean, that's kind of emblematic of like what I need you to not do is like, because I, in order to get rid of the stuff on your board, I had to throw everything yeah. and I could rebuild, but if you are able to rebuild as well, yeah. then I'm just like lose. I'm losing out because I'm trading two of my things to not die while you are further just progressing your board. My final swing where I trade or I clear the entire board was pretty risky. I didn't really have a backup plan to that. I just needed a top deck, but I figured go for it <laughs> because I had the equipment. I, figured, I think I had to. Yeah. Did you have mana to attack with only the construct and then equip the White Plume with Shadow Spear or uh, Sophie? I don't think it matters that much, but... 
just like to keep the oh the attack uh, just attack for seven and then let it trade with a huge chunk of your board and move it over after yeah I did because I had I had three mana after right I needed four to be able to activate for the extra point of damage right, to push through that right. trample maybe I like that maybe keeping back white maybe just white plume doesn't attack this game ever yeah yeah would have been kind of neat because then. Well, because then I don't clear your Mayhem Devil, and then you've got two three threes, and I've got yeah, one three three, but I have the equipment afterwards. But the Mayhem Devil needed to die. Actually, yeah, I like that better. Yeah, don't, don't listen to me. I yeah. forgot about Mayhem Devil being the blocker. I mean, the problem the problem is even though we clear the board, it's not really equal because you have the three three, and you sell the Planeswalker and a Bitter Blossom. Yeah. So I'm I'm already fighting from behind, but I think I do need to force to try and get that initiative off you, right? Like I need mm -hmm. I think I need to swing out there. Yeah. That was yeah. a super fun series. Hell of a match. Yeah. yeah. Take us home. And if you like Hell of a Batch, uh, you can find more about the format and the deck list that we played today down in the description below. Uh, and also, I imagine, a plug to the Patreon, patreon.com slash loadingreadyrun. It's because of all of you aristocrats. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Uh, I've been Wheeler. I will probably continue to be Wheeler. Uh, thank you for joining me, Serge. It's great to be here. I'm Serge. And, of course, Run on Tech. Ben on Tech. Hi. Ben says hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> okay, bye. Studio's haunted. <laughs> <laughs>